Good afternoon, everyone. This is Melissa with the StockSwish.com, and welcome. Welcome to AFOP. Boy, what a fantastic golden gap this turned out to be today. Uh, really didn't even think that this would make a new low, and it's almost doing it. This is like, look at this, $12. Well, didn't yet here. Talk about dream targets. So let's go over this. Uh, first things first. Even with the big bar in this, this is actually an entry for a swing trade or a core trade. Uh, targets nine dollars. This is a real target, not a fantasy target, and not even a dream target. Actually, I don't know the timing if it gets there, but this is a this is an overnight position here and here now that you could do uh, for a longer term trade, a swing trade really. This this is totally feasible as well. Possibly seven dollars. Look at that. Stops over the high of the gap. Okay, this is actually really a very good bearish gap. And the target on this today, this is a dream target for $12. I mean, I was looking in the morning at $13, $12.50. It was very realistic. But what happened is that it fell off the planet. It fell off the planet, and I was talking about this earlier in the room, selling, 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 selling is what's come into this today and you can see it, you can see it here. I mean, this is all selling, hard, hard selling. So let's go over it in the one minute chart. And if you're doing a swing trade, which, well, first of all, you know, you're do, if you're doing a day trade, you're in the day trade, you're flat before four. But if you want to do an overnight, you take the day trade entry, okay? Your position sizing is different because your risk parameters are different for overnights because your leverage is different for overnights. Okay, for your sizing, but the entry would be the same. Okay, the entry would be the same for the swing trade or the core trade. You would take the day trade if you want to, get out of a portion of the position and hold some of it into the larger move. Or if you just want to do the day trade, you're in, you're out flat as a short. Or if you want to do the core trade, just, just no day trade, okay? you still enter the position with only your position sizing for the overnight with the entry on the day trade. That's why you still have to know how to rate the gaps and know the entry for the day trade because you really, you want to get in at the best price possible. I mean, you really, really, really want to get in at the best price possible. It's just one of those things. So, Really, what happened here was the the stock open here and had a huge sell off here into the open. I was watching this because in real life time, this looked like a bottoming tail that had a green head on the five. Okay, but then it did this topping tail thing quickly here, settled down and came down really quick and set up here right at the reversal time. There was only one problem with this today, and I bet it isn't even. No, it's not even there anymore. Now it's two pennies. The problem with it this morning was it was just too spready. It was just way, way, way too spready. Look at the volume in this now, though. Pretty amazing. Look at that. So this morning it had a spread into this beginning period. That was wavering. Like one minute it would be a penny, next minute it would be two pennies, next minute it would be eight pennies, then it would be ten pennies. The bottom line is you must take the trade and price in the maximum spread. If you don't do that, there's a chance you get taken out when the stock moves up and touches on a number that's not even really the, the stop out. But with the spread, it might be if you don't have it priced in. So the proper thing to do is to, to take the trade and you must stop in the maximum spread. And if you ever do this and you realize you didn't have it right, like because this was a moving spread this morning, one minute it was a penny and the next it was 10. So if you ever miss it and say, oh no, it's really not a penny, and then you see it's more, just change the stop. And unfortunately, that might mean that you end up risking more if you ready size yourself and you took it, or you can just quick take some out. In this case here, if you took it, you were, you were up right away, so there really wasn't any concern. Came down here, broke the low of the day by two pennies, and then double bottomed, and then rallied up here, and actually, I called a second trade right in here. So you could have actually taken half off, lowered the stop, taken the whole thing, and retook it came down in here, went and broke $13. And this was a really nice move. I mean, this is a dollar plus move here. This is a dollar 12 cent move in here, dollar 13. Then what it did was this thing where it backed up right in here. And look what it did after that. I mean, this is absolutely insane. 
But after the retest of resistance here, the stock actually dropped another dollar from there. Look! And this is all in the morning period at 1030. I mean, once it broke 1250, here was the bar. Yeah, here was the guy. It was at 1025. Once it broke this, I mean, this was just like a, this was a dream target here at 1250 from where this opened. But once it broke 1250, $12 was likely, and that's where it is. And I look at this. It's just, no, it's not going to break the low. That's really it for the day. It's 12 bucks. 239 here. This is this is done now. But this is not done for the overall move. So you could enter it at 14, you know, 14, 12, 14, 11, 14, 10 for the swing trade. And you put the stop over the high of the day. It's a it's a paper stop because you're watching the trade when you're in swing trades. But you have to understand how to rate gaps to know that this actually, this gap is going to hold to get to the next number. That it's going to be able to be a position you can take as a swing trade to get in it, take the position at the area, size yourself properly, and take the trade to get it down to the $9 target. That's very realistic. Now, because of the bar, the size of the bar it had here today, I, I just, you know, I don't know the timing if it gets to something like that. But it may have a rest day or back up for a little bit, but it's not going to get over the high of today. I mean, it's 100% conviction because of the gap and the way that it broke and just everything about it. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful golden gap in AFOP. Really nice. And all of this did its of its own accord today. It completely did it, did it of its own accord today. And uh, this really worked out very good as a day trade and can be done as a swing trade or core trade. Swing trade's to $9 and the core trade is to 7 bucks if it wants to go there. I think you have to do have target areas when you're in overnights. But this is one of these gaps. Even though the bar looks like it is today, you could actually take for a longer term position here overnight. And it's, you know, had a really beautiful, fantastic move as a day trade. And just, you know, word of note, when you see something with a spread, price it out at the maximum level and, and just know that you're going to have to do that. <laughs> this is really, let's just see the size of this bar over here. Well, that was $2. Yeah, look, $2.35. So this is really like the biggest bar in this chart here, I think. Really did go to a dream target today. You know, it just goes to show you, you never know. I mean, you just never know. Look, this one here was over two. This was like two, 225, this guy here. I mean, you never know. And that's why this, this conception of risk to reward in reference to taking the positions and then with the spreads, you have reasonable targets. Some days you take a trade and you have the area, you have the target. And by the time the setup happens and it triggers, or you see the spread, it goes and it doesn't go on to make three R's. You end up making two. And you end up having to get out of it because you see the reversal sign or goes right to the first target and you got to take it. But then there's days where you have a trade that sets up and you have a very reasonable target. And it, it not only goes to that, it goes far beyond your expectations. And you think that it's barely going to make the three on the first setup because of the stop or the spread or whatever the case may be, or the entry. And then all of a sudden it makes, you know, 10 plus R's. This is trading. You know, this is trading. When selling comes into something, and that's what happened with the AFOP today, it's really, really pushes the stock down to go to these larger numbers. And it's a great thing if you like to short. And I do love to short. And I think if you don't know how to short, you need to learn. We're in a market right now where shorts are getting paid. Okay, shorts are getting paid uh, here. And if you don't understand how to short, as a trader, you got to learn. doesn't matter if you do day trading or swing trading or core trading. No one should be afraid to short. People need to learn how to do it and understand what it means. It's really not that difficult to understand. I think learning what trades to take and what things to short is takes understanding, which is why I teach the class. But I believe that strongly in anything I trade, even if I would do a long. So anything you trade, you need to be picky with the entries and with the stock symbol that you, that you do. But I find that people shy away from shorts because they don't understand them, whereas they love to do longs. You gotta know how to do both if you want to make money in the market, quite frankly. And I prefer to do shorts because I because they have huge bars, because they move very quickly, because they tend to move fast in the morning. And when panic sets into a stock, the red goes and runs like the dickens. So I love that about shorting. And that's really mainly what I focus on. And there's a lot of people that just don't even know how to do it. So I think it's one of these things that you've got to decide, hey, I think I gotta learn how to do these shorts because I'm missing out here if I don't. 
And so that's one of the reasons I'm specializing in these areas. It's a, it's a niche because I love to short. I'm just, you know, really very good at it. And not only that, seeing when something's going to break and seeing the break before it happens, which is a great thing. And, and uh, <laughs> here's the AFOP today. So beautiful, 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 fantastic AFOP. This is Melissa with the StockSwish.com. This is AFOP. Golden gap of the day here in the stock swish show trading room went to the dream target and is an entry for swing accord trade to nine dollars, which is great. Really nice move on this AFOP today, and some follow through will be here uh, whenever it sets in, which could be about the next week even. I mean, who knows? With this kind of sell off here today, anything's possible. And the market is is still showing weakness here today, to be honest with you, more so than I thought. If you'd like more information on the Golden Gap class, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. The next class is this weekend, February 8th and 9th, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Email me for more information for the sign-up documents if you'd like to sign up. Again, a great time of the year to learn how to short. Very, very important to know how to short specifically in this market. Yeah, and uh, I'm the one to teach you, that's for sure. <laughs> so have a great day, everybody.